In this bulletin, one of Australia's largest private hospitals is set to expand. Churches call for an end to the war in Afghanistan. And Christian young people urge Brazilians to give blood. This is In Focus Christian News and Current Affairs. Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm Danielle Sinnott. One of Australia's largest private hospitals is set to expand its capacity with an increase in beds, a new cancer centre and more. Kent Kingston reports. In 1903, the 61-bed Sydney Sanitarium was launched to reach the community with health and hope. The message hasn't changed, but the facilities certainly have. This latest development will see the Sydney Adventist Hospital increase its capacity to 534 beds. Currently, we're having difficulty meeting our community's needs. That is contrary to our mission. Our mission is to meet those needs. It's expected that stage one redevelopment will be completed by late 2013 and will cost approximately $181 million. Eight new operating theatres and a new integrated cancer centre will see the Sydney Adventist Hospital maintain its position as one of Australia's premier private hospitals. This is Kent Kingston reporting for In Focus. A Catholic social justice group has launched a scathing attack on Australian asylum seeker policies, labelling them harsh, inhumane and reprehensible. Queensland's Catholic Justice and Peace Commission said there is little evidence that either major party's approach to asylum seekers is motivated by concern for human dignity. The government's Malaysian asylum seeker swap deal came in for particular criticism, with the Commission describing it as morally wrong. In a media statement, the Commission called for Christians and others concerned about the refugee issues to reject the current political response to asylum seekers. Controversial Melbourne pastor Daniel Nalia has launched a new Christian-based political party, which he says will contest the next federal election. The Rise Up Australia party is focused on freedom of speech, stopping the erosion of Christian values and opposing Sharia law in Australia. Our court system is good enough for us. We have a democracy. The forefathers of this land have fought for this democracy. The forefathers of this land established this land with a great democracy on Judeo-Christian values. We do not need Sharia courts in Australia. In 2004, Sri Lankan-born Pastor Nalia ran unsuccessfully for the Senate as a Family First candidate. He was asked to leave the Family First party after speaking against brothels, bottle shops, mosques and Buddhist temples, calling them Satan's strongholds. History has been made in outback New South Wales with the official launch of the Kurrawa Adventist Aboriginal College near Biwarana. Karawa is believed to be the first Indigenous boarding school to be established in the state. The curriculum provides an intensive numeracy and literacy focus as well as practical skills. Starting small with 16 Year 7 students currently enrolled, the school plans to provide secondary education up to Year 10 within three years. Church leaders did a heap of consultation before the opening of the school uh, with the Indigenous community and with um, you know, local council and the other stakeholders in the region. Uh, they were represented there on the day when they had the opening. Everyone was there and it was great to see. In an open letter to the US President Barack Obama, 40 American religious leaders have urged an end to the war in Afghanistan. The statement led by mainline Christian peace groups and the progressive Sojourners Ministry says Al-Qaeda has effectively been driven out of Afghanistan. The Christian leaders say attention should now focus on helping Afghans rebuild their shattered country, which has been constantly at war since 1979. Obama has followed through on his plans to order a staged withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan. Critics in the US are divided on whether the pullout is too fast or too slow. Egyptian Christians are concerned that conditions under a post-Mubarak government will be no better than before. Al Mazri Al Yum reports a new draft law on places of worship has come under criticism from various churches and the Egyptian Organisation for Human Rights. The draft law requires places of worship to be over 1,000 square metres in size and no closer than one kilometre apart. The churches say these conditions are unrealistic for their situation. 
However, some say it will be good to finally have the same law for both mosques and non-Muslim places of worship. The European Sunday Alliance has been launched in Brussels to push for legal recognition of Sunday as a day of rest throughout European Union. The coalition of church groups, trade unions and civil society organisations says a synchronised rest day produces social cohesion and a healthy work-family balance. A spokesman for the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Northern Europe expressed support for a day of rest as part of a healthy family lifestyle. But he warned a mandated Sunday rest may cause tensions with religious groups that observe Saturday as the Sabbath. Adventist young people in South America are leading the way in encouraging their communities to donate blood. In 2005, the Vida por Vidas, or Life for Lives project, kicked off in Brazil's south. 300,000 blood donations later, Vida por Vidas has spread to seven other South American nations, broken records and been awarded by the World Health Organization. Not resting on their laurels, the youth leaders have started a campaign to encourage bone marrow donors, with more than 12,500 registering last year. If you ever have the opportunity to meet Pope Benedict XVI, you might detect a waft of linden blossom, frankincense and a discreet suggestion of musk. That's because the Pope just had a new cologne designed for him to celebrate the 60th anniversary of his ordination. Benedictus follows in the tradition of the Pope's cologne released in 2005 using the original recipe of Pope Pius IX's personal fragrance. The perfumes are part of a range developed by Californian Dr. Frederick Haas, who specialises in using essential oils from history in his home perfumery. Later in the program, talking politics with Lyle Shelton from Canberra, Dr. James Wright with this week's Health in Focus, and what do Christian doctors say about the current euthanasia debate? Back in a moment.